What's up, guys? It's your favorite boy, Delphin, back at it again on Revenge of the Sequel. And this episode is brought to you by your sponsors at Orange Vanilla Coke dot com orange vanilla coke it's the best way to quench your thirst on a hot texas summer make sure to go out to your nearest corner store heb safeway bel air doesn't matter get yourself a nice a nice tasty orange vanilla vanilla Coke. coke thank you john because there's no better flavors that would go together than orange it's frankly so obvious. I'm shocked Vanilla. that it took this long. And, and Coke. Coke. Absolutely. It's like the Pythagorean theorem. It's A squared vanilla, B squared orange, C squared Coke. Coke. There it is. It's, it's, it's obvious, frankly. It's obvious. Guys. It's math. And let's get started. This time, it's personal. Yeah, so, we are doing Paul Blart Mall Cop 2, baby. Hell yeah. Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Two. Y'all excited? I am. Boy, it, oh boy. I can't believe it's taking us this long to get to Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Yeah. The, 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 the penultimate. Yeah. Frankly, the Empire Strikes Back of what I can only... The Adam Sandler Cinematic Universe. The yeah. ASCU. The ASCU. The ASCU. Yeah, the ASCU. Frank, frankly, and I, I hope that we get the Return of the Jedi of this saga. Because frankly, um, with what happens in this movie, and we're definitely going to get into it, um, I can't wait to see what happens in a third entry. So to start things off, let's 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 uh, let's do a little trailer by you know just to get us in the zone of things. Blart, blart, blart. Columbia. Vegas. Take it in, Cupcake. I'm finally working the big leagues. I'm so proud of you. I heard you're pretty good at one of those things. I've been known to damn it. Oh! Monkey hopping it. Oh! oh. <laughs> I missed it! What's so cool? Still got it. 400,000 square feet protected. And there's about another minute of that. <laughs> and, you know, I think we got... You know, the gist. You don't get the gist. Just by listening, yeah. I think, to that first 45 seconds, you kind of yeah. know all there is to know. I think that we deserve to cut that off quick because we endured about 90 minutes of that. Yeah, absolutely. So about a minute more, I don't know if my Paul Blart appreciation levels could uh, handle that amount of of Blartness. Yeah. You know? Uh, of, of that that unfiltered, uncut pure mm. blart content mm. john let's start off from it's the me john it's, it's you john you, you and have, you're delphin and i'm delphin hey. and uh I, I i have several pods and you yeah you you were you wear hats i do i'm wearing one right now i'm wearing yep. one of my signature hats <laughs> and uh love movies i love movies yeah you're, you're also very handsome so yep. yeah absolutely yeah. you bet your fucking ass i am yeah you are yeah yeah and you and you play saxophone really well. Um, so where does what? How does this movie start, uh, John? So this movie starts Delphin, um, <laughs> really just like just like any other movie. Um, the main character getting divorced and his mom getting hit by a milk truck and dying. Um, you know that. Cla- fr- frankly, I, I'm getting wait. Kind of hold sick on of a it. second. I'm just enjoying my orange vanilla Coke, and I had no idea what you were talking about. Oh, well, I mean, we love orange vanilla Coke here. Um, hey, that's actually pretty good. No shit. Are you kidding me? 
shit. Let me try that. <laughs> Guys. Hold on a second. Delphin and I here um, <laughs> have actually been, I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to expose the bit because I'm curious now. Um, so like months ago, Delphin and I, yeah, we're, Delphin we're and in I. the, we're in the theater. We were right. Yeah. Weren't we in like a movie theater and we saw the ad yeah. play for orange vanilla Coke, mm. a flavor combination uh, that the Coca-Cola um, corporation is really pushing right now. Yeah. They also and make we Dasani were, as well. Yeah, they do. Uh, we all love water. Um, do you guys love water? Hashtag water. Let, let us Twitter. know in the in in the the comments and uh, twit yeah. twit tweets. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we were in there. We were in the theater, um, mm. and we saw an ad for orange vanilla Coke, and we went, "Excuse me, what? Orange vanilla and Coke? Yeah. What is this? Some kind of like mm. ice cream like sherbet combination?" That doesn't with sound, Coca-Cola. Yeah, with it. Coca-Cola. And it just sounded strange. Um, and, and you had this uh, robust um, woman singing it. Orange vanilla Coke. Oh, really? I forgot yeah. that. Yeah, I think you're right. I remember and that. She was very sassy, and I liked it. Yeah. Uh, but we said, um, challenge accepted. And like a month and a half ago, probably now, hmm. I got one of these sons of bitches at the gas station, and I said, "We're going to do this. We're, We're going to try, try it out. We're going to try it out." And what better podcast than our signature Revenge um, of the Sequel, Revenge of the Sequel, yeah. mainline podcast here with 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 thousands of listeners, thousands of listeners mm-hmm. talking uh, talking sequels, mm-hmm. talking one of the biggest sequels, Paul Blart Mall Cop Two. Now yeah. I'm going to try this orange vanilla Coke. A dab of uh, whiskey in it. Uh, a say. dab of whiskey. You guys hear that? Ooh, that mm. sounds nice. All right, what is it? <sighs> Fuck, How, how's it kind of good. That's kind of good. <laughs> Fucking hell, we're gonna kill this thing, aren't we? <laughs> we are. All right. So, wow. Fuck yeah, off, Coca Cola. God damn it. <sighs> I wanted to sit here and say this was gonna be bad. But you know, it's so weird that it's like pretty tasty. It's it is weird. The thing is, the orange and the vanilla are the things that I did they, they, not expect. They kind of like well, because orange and vanilla do go well together. But yeah, because that's like the sherbet, right? Like yeah, the sherbet is kind of. A, but yeah. when you put in coke, it's like, what are you doing? Like that's a little weird. You know, I don't know if the coke is very. If I can really taste the coke very well, I think they reduce the coke content yeah. to even out the orange sherbet. Welcome to beverage. Reviews and my name is review. Delphin with my, my co host John. We're talking orange vanilla Coke this week yeah. with a side of our good friend Paul Blart. Welcome back to <laughs> Revenge of the Sequel Gang. Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2. So I want to I wanted to ask you this, Adam. Well, Have you seen who's Adam and where is he? Oh, well, if he was here, yeah. what would he say when I asked him? That question, Delphin. What do you think Adam um, thinks about Paul I just Blart? Got a, I just got a text message saying that Adam has killed himself after watching Paul Blart Mall Cop See, 2. that that tracks. And but you and I, Delphin and John, being us, we, yeah, see. we, we suffer for uh, the art of uh, our sequel podcast here. Yeah, for the entertainment you viewers enjoy yeah we know y'all watch paul blart mall cop too and this is that that content that you so desperately crave mm-hmm. and so delphin now i ask the question to you have you seen paul blart one no i haven't i exclusively only watch sequels i don't watch anything prior is- to a sequel okay if it has a one in it i say no sir i give you a hard pass i say no thanks i would imagine that you're sorely lacking context for a lot of the episodes that you do hey i'm always getting revenge though yeah because that's the name of the i would hope so yeah it sure is Nailed it. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have not seen Paul Blart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I uh, John, have seen <laughs> the first one. Yeah. But I think I – and I should have this pulled up. The, the first Paul Blart came out quite a while before I can, I this can, one. I can, I can, uh, yeah, pull pull it up. You got your, your laptop to you. here. I, I want to say it came out in 2009. I think it came out in 2009 because I feel it's like – Yeah, it is 2009's Paul Blart. I, I think I saw this movie for some reason. Yeah. So is this your historical context from the great um, podcast, Director Showdown, hosted by Adam and Brent, that's 
very good. Yeah, and that, is that very good. everyone should you know it, listen to. It is. To. You know. You know. Let's let's go ahead and and and, yeah. and steal that that segment of yeah. news because I think it fits perfectly here. Yeah, I think yeah. that and yes, also yeah. Can we talk about how great Adam and Brent are? Just for a second, just because like. I feel like they don't get enough appreciation. Sure. So yeah. they own they, they're, they they have this podcast called Director Showdown, mm-hmm. and they review two directors. Yeah, every and season. They, they face them off. It's a podcast. Yeah, and they go through their selected filmographies. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually around yeah. eight to twelve uh, episodes per season. And you know, I was on their Hateful Eight podcast. You were Delphin. You were on that yeah, episode. Delphin me. Yeah. And I was on yeah. uh, a number of episodes being yeah. John. I was on uh, many episodes of their podcast. Yeah, you were, it's you were on... Uh, it's always great. You were on some very special ones, for yeah, sure. absolutely. And they they are so good. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they do it. I don't know, I don't know how they review movies so well. Mm-hmm. And Frankly, not as good uh, or entertaining as us, I think I can safely I say. Can, I, you know I what? Mean, Sometimes you got to be humble. And yeah. You know, and we sometimes give, we, you we, don't got to be humble. Yeah, and and just admit when a, a truth is a truth, a fact and, is a fact, and you just but lean into fun. it. Yeah. It's good. It's a good podcast. So stealing their category, historical context. Yeah. Where, when how uh, when did you see Paul Blart one? How what, what were you well, wearing? Well, so I was probably in the vein of Paul Blart. I was probably wearing a Hawaiian shirt and some uh, some shorts. Mm-hmm. Was that in your ska phase, John? Uh, it, it was, it was probably right smack dab in the middle of my ska phase. Um, I think it was before a show before a ska rock band show. And I said, let me just, you know, let's just go check out Blart two. Let's just see what's going on with Blart two. Yeah. Um, I went in, I, you know, I went and saw it. I went and saw Blart two and you know, I don't remember a single goddamn thing from the experience. Huh? Or I'm sorry, Blart 1 is what I was talking about. Right, Blart, right. Blart 1 is the one that I saw, um, and I don't remember anything from You know it. what's funny is yeah. that we just had watched Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2, and I don't remember a single goddamn thing from that movie. Yeah, it's already uh, it's already evaporating straight out of my fucking brain. Right. It, it, it's yeah. kind of weird how like our brains have developed a filter for... Um, mm-hmm. For films such as this. Yeah, well, it, it is, uh, yeah, it is pretty interesting because um, it's almost like a defense mechanism mm-hmm. that our brains have. Like, and- there, like there's a, um, there, there, there is little, little like Kubrick Spielberg antibodies in our brains. Yeah. Well, did, that, yeah, to, that, to, to, to reference director showdown. Yeah, to again, reference the podcast <laughs> and Brent and Adam. It's, it's, it's almost as if I, John, have a little Spielberg in my head and you, Delphin, have a little Kubrick right. in, your, exactly. in your noggin up there. And then they're sitting there, you know, I, I almost uh, envision, have you ever seen, uh, what's it called? Um, let's say Harold's brain. No, that's not it. It's like the old Disney animated short hmm. where it's, it's, it, it, it's basically what Inside Out is based on, where it's it's just oh. co- it's a it's a whole little short cartoon yeah. about uh, one guy's brain, hmm. and it's like it personif- uh, is that the right word like personification yeah, yeah personifies yeah. it um, as like a human almost. Right. I almost picture just like a little Spielberg and a little Kubrick just sitting up there in our brains watching Paul Blart, and they're like, oh, we're gonna need to scrub this out of our out of our mind the second it ends because this is. Right. This is bad. You ever see a SpongeBob episode where his head like go, he goes insane or something, and he overloads on studying or something, and mm. like uh, you know, ever all the little SpongeBob's were on fire. Yeah, I do remember that. And all the file files were burning, and they couldn't handle like what they were watching. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was what was going on when I was watching Paul Blart Mall Cop too. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I think it is the it's it's something where your brain is already deleting it as you're yeah. watching it. <laughs> It's it's like you it's it is almost like you're funneling information into your brain and yeah. your brain is funneling it directly into the toilet. You know, I wish your brain I wish our is. metabolism was that fast. Everyone would be skinny if like we could somehow Yeah, if you morph could somehow that. shit the second you eat. Yeah. Well you'd have to eat on the toilet. And yeah. we've all been there. That's no fun. <laughs> I've had plenty of of uh first Friday nights. All right. Yep. Downtown San Antonio. Spent, where you spent at? eating eating tacos? Yeah, where you where you're, where We've you're all been there. Three three a.m. and you and you didn't find the girl at the club that you liked. Mm-hmm. You didn't get her number, and you're eating, you know, Taco Bell. 
and puking it right back up and pooping all at the same time. Yep. That's me, Delphin. That's what Delphin likes to what, do. Yeah. I, John, I wouldn't have anything, uh, I wouldn't know anything about that, you know, <laughs> personally, but. So, um, so, but, <laughs> so Paul Blart at the beginning of the second one. Yeah. He apparently was married to uh, some, some, some lady mm-hmm. named uh, the actress Jama Mays. Divor- so, yeah, pull okay. that up because I recognized her. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I like I said, I don't remember the first one remotely, um, and I almost I almost wonder if I'm equating. She was on Glee. What what else are because there's one that I'm heroes. Liking. You're you're like a hero. Oh player, right? yeah, I liked heroes back in the day. Yeah, John, you love heroes, right? I did. I John did love heroes. Mm. Um, shout out Siler. Siler fucking owns. Siler kicks ass. Um, she, she was on uh, a lot of TV. I think yeah. that makes sense for being in a Blart movie. But though. but other other films she was in was the Smurfs and um, the, Smurfs, okay. the Smurfs two. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, epic movie. Oh yeah, uh, you remember that movie? Yep, one of the best comedies. Is that of, uh, is that a sequel? Technically, I guess it's in the string of um, the vein. It's like of, uh, it's more of a franchise. I think like epic movie is not a sequel, uh, but then they made like I mean, there's a whole bunch of those. There's disaster movie, yeah, epic movie. You know, not another teen movie is like a good one. Like that, like that one somehow is yeah. one of the good. Uh, yeah, what do you call that movies? subgenre of comedy? Parodies, right? Like just parodies, I think huh? just parodies. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Blart to okay, yes. So it starts with Blart. His like literally, it, it's it's actually kind of insane that this movie just literally in the first two minutes mm. retcons the entire first movie. Like if it was any other franchise and they did that, like if people actually cared about the first movie, they'd be like. What the fuck? Like, why would you just erase every development in the first movie? But this one does that in the first two minutes. Yeah, yeah, because it's just like we were what? happy ever, yeah. like happily ever uh-huh. after for six days, and then it shows him holding like a divorce document, and you're like, "Wow, okay, we're going there." And then his mom gets hit by a milk truck because yeah. I guess the actress didn't want to come back. <laughs> Shirley Knight was the actress. Shirley Knight. Okay. I like how you remember it was specifically a milk truck, John. That's some great memory you got up there. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a milk truck. Cause, well, because he has like a joke about it later. Like he oh. says some joke about how his mom died. Did she hit die? By a milk truck? She oh, died. Yeah, she was, yeah, she she died. was killed. Yeah. yeah it's it's, it's a, a real truck. dark beginning. Wow. Um, and. You know, that's, that's the thing. That's how you pull audiences in by killing off your mom with a milk truck yeah that's absolutely. how that's how you gain sympathy for um the main character you know in a good movie yeah. in a good movie i would agree with you <laughs> but hey oh this is the blart franchise yeah. we don't care about that at so all. his daughter who is a i don't know what the lore is on the beginning but he has I a daughter forget, yeah. who's like a teenager she's like 18 i guess yeah she has to be 18 mm. she's gonna go to college yeah and mm. uh she got accepted at ucla and wouldn't tell good old papa papa blart yeah papa blart does that roll off the tongue so papa blart. yeah that, papa that does blart. great um, and uh she she doesn't want to tell him because um you, well, she's, yeah. she's worried about him. I mean, he just lost his mom. He just lost his wife. It's it's and, and then it does the classic thing of she gets her letter of acceptance mm-hmm. at like the exact moment that he opens the mail and gets the letter of, hey, you're being honored in Vegas at the pathetic mall cop showcase. Uh, come on down. What was it? Was the official ter- name it's, it's of it's like security, security? It's like yeah, security officers convention. Officers convention something. The, the sit uh, soak the sock. Yeah. The sock con movie. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's playing in the background, and I was just reminded of the best character in the movie. Right. We're in a circle back around to it, but so, um, yeah. And then and then they they decide to go to vegas because that's where the that's mm-hmm. where the commission is and we get this at. incredible montage of vegas you remember that montage it was about it was about a good 15 minutes i think felt i think that way. I, i'm yeah. rounding down yeah it felt straight out of 
CSI. Y'all remember CSI with William yeah. Peterson? Yeah. And, uh, what does and CSI then, stand for again? Crime scene investigators. Oh, Investigation. Yeah, Come on, you yeah, know okay, that. Okay, fine. Um, I thought but, you'd pull uh, out some some fun abbreviation joke uh, like well, you do, John, because that's a signature move of John. God damn It's it. not, but I'm just so... <laughs> Um, that is not the signature move of John. Yeah. Signature moves are of director showdown. That's what they do. Yeah. There. And we yeah. got to stop stealing their bits. Frankly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's their thing. That's their um, thing. As far as I'm concerned. Baby. Cause I um, say baby. You do lot. say baby. Um, yeah. you know, but some of the, dir- I mean, Brent from the director showdown likes to say baby too. He's he does. Um, so yeah, they go to Vegas and, uh, we have this fun hotel check-in sequence where blah, bl- I almost said blah part. You wouldn't be wrong. Part <laughs> with part lol. Oh yeah. Um, and his daughter. Yeah. Uh, are checking in and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say about that. So no, no, you get this sexy little young boy. Uh, what's his name? Yeah. Lane. So oh, there's Lane, there's Lane yeah, yeah, yeah. who helps them helps them with their baggage. Oh, okay. This, now this kid, this, now this kid yeah. is thirsty, man. This he, kid is thirsty for um. What's what's uh Blart's daughter's name? I forget her name. Maya, 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 uh, Maya Blart. Blart. Nothing, nothing rolls off the tongue so sweetly yeah. like a like 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 Maya a Maya like a violin in. Yeah. In a perfect seventy-five degree weather mm-hmm. spring day, yeah. sun shines out. You're with your best gal, yep. And you want to hear the words Maya Blart. Blart. That's oh yeah. That, that is that Sounds is so. Good. That is the angelic ethereal mm-hmm. level of screenwriting that you get from with the Blart Paul picture here. Blart. Male cop two directed <laughs> male, by male, male cop. cop. <laughs> you put a pin in that. We're gonna circle back around to that fucking uh, <laughs> that that slight accident that works in the movie's favor. Um, yeah. So you have Lane, and Lane is thirsty. Maya Blart is thirsty. These kids. They just want to hook up from the second they fucking meet each other. Yeah, and he's like this this um, handsome YouTube streaming <sighs> looking guy. Yeah, who's dude, probably some ninja looking motherfucker. Like he yeah. probably he probably is Eastern European. He's got that olive skin and and thick black hair. Well, look what else he's been in because I recognized him. I feel okay. like he is from a Disney show, maybe a Nickelodeon show. Um, but yeah, so their name is. David Henry, David Clayton Henry. I mean, that doesn't ring a bell. It's, I, I just know I've seen him. And in he was he was on How I Met Your Mother. That's what. It, wow, and, that's actually kind of crazy. That kind of blows my mind because he is the kid. He is the kid that the dad is speaking to for like the entire series. Huh. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Huh. That's crazy. He's on um, Wizards of Waverly Place. Sure, that makes sense. I knew he was like probably from a, a Nickelodeon and, thing. And uh, what other movies? Disney. He was on um, uh, Grown Ups Two. Grown Ups Two. Ah, Grown Ups Two. Yeah, yeah. Grown Ups Two. Remember that? Another big hit movie. I hope we do that one on a sequel. Why didn't we? Yeah. Frankly, we probably should have done Grown Ups Two. Um, but we're talking Blart. Blart checks in. Blart's fucking ready to go. I think he thinks he's going to give a speech. Yeah. So he right? talks to the concierge for about um, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's long. It's really long. About him forever. trying to get a room. And uh, he, fortunately, this movie took the high road and did not make the flamboyant um, concierge. Ooh. Yeah, uh, I, I to, was to uh, making they weren't making fun of him, which was good. At least. It, it it saves the the weird uh, like gender dynamic stuff for later on, and boy oh boy does it deliver in that department. Yes, um, yep, yeah, just just like a classic Sandler production. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, basically Blart's daughter Maya Blart, she's like. I just want to fucking hang out with with uh, Ted's kid from How I Met Your Mother. I just want to fucking meet up with Ted's kid. This whole whose name's Lane. Lane, yeah, Lane. What a good name, Lane. And it's is. it's not even in any interesting spelt way. It's just like, oh, 
Y'all know freeways? Yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently names are a bit in this film. Like, okay, yeah, for sure. Like Blart, right? Like, yeah, yeah that's that's a bit. It's, it's like fart. Yeah. Like fart, you get it? And there's, there's uh, everyone has weird ass names. You got Blart, you got Lane, you got Davina. Yes. Okay. So got, has, has she been introduced already? She has, right? She's the general manager of uh, the Wynn Hotel. <sighs> okay. Got, okay. So there are two. There, there's a lot of things going there's, on. There's a lot to and talk And none about. of it matters. And none of it does matter. Um, Davina, <laughs> Davina, a beautiful woman who is the manager of, of the Wynn mm-hmm. She she has Could amazing. In that. We're gonna come back to that. She has the amazing chick hotel. bones, and she's yeah. obviously way out of Paul Blart's league. Yep, she is the manager, and every time uh, Blart runs into her, he borderline uh, like verbally sexually, yeah, assaults like ver- her. Yeah, like verbally assaults her, and basically says like he basically negs her. Every time that he runs into her and says, like, like you're starting to sweat while you're talking to me. Yeah. And it's just like, it's from the get go. You're like, hold on a second. Hold the okay, phone. Okay. Is this, a, is this a bit? Mm. If so, it's a bad bit. Mm-hmm. It's not funny. It's problematic. <laughs> it is problematic. Yeah. Uh, and it's like weird and gross i think and it's kind it of like a toxic absolutely thing absolutely toxic it's, so but yeah from he the, picked up he picked up the player's handbook yeah and he and, he, 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 and you, if you look really closely at paul blard's phone at that very moment you see uh 4chan um pulled up on mm-hmm. there yep he and, has, it, and uh, it's he has slash b pulled open yep. and he's uh he's browsing and it says take the red pill on there yeah you know saying that girl, she doesn't deserve your respect, and she's into it. Exactly, and it's it's uh, so so yeah. From the get go, you're already like this guy's okay. a huge scumbag. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like okay, so okay. The movie, it's obviously the the movie wanting us to buy in on this guy to be like, yeah, we care about him. He's, He's the main character. Yeah. He's the main character. Absolutely, we're supposed to care about him, but also. Like philosophically, this movie is pretty gross. Oh yeah, and so it makes it impossible to buy in on mm-hmm. his side. And also, also he's I don't know he's like an asshole to his daughter. He's an asshole to everybody. Yeah, he's a, like, he's pretty much a dick. I, to I can't see a uh, an instance where he was like kind to someone. <laughs> yeah, well, it's 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 all it's so fascinating, man, because yeah. this movie is like this weird character study in like a very fragile, like a masculine, fragile, uh, male. Or, yeah. Because like, I think deep down inside, this is Paul Blart, the psychological profile. And, uh, this is what we do here. This is what we do. See, we, director, we dive deep. Director, uh, Dir- director, um, revenge, revenge, of the, revenge, revenge of the director down. Yeah. Yes. And he is a, uh, castrated um, male because mm-hmm. he is not a real cop. He does. He's a mall security cop, and he's already downgraded mm-hmm. in the eyes of society. And he chooses to project his castration to others by saying, "Like I actually have balls. I have authority over you, and I'm going to neg you as much as I can." You yeah. know. You know. Fuck this movie. Yeah, fuck this movie. Yeah, this movie movie sucks. (laughs) I think this movie represents, like, a really fucking toxic, like, ideological... um, Like, it's it's like a weird, toxic thing that's trying to Mm. mask itself as something to be endearing and, like... uh, I don't know, like, yeah, like, kind, like, like, you're supposed to be on his side and, like, oh, he's just trying to prove himself and all mm. this stuff. And it's like, no, guys like this are kind of the worst, though. Yeah. It's like, Paul Blart is a piece of shit. Uh, and That's you, why I don't understand, like, what is the, I mean, I do understand the target audience, but I don't understand what the target audience takes away because he, mm, um, yeah. Because in one hand, the audience is supposed to say, ha ha, he's fat. 
and he's so dumb. Yeah. That's I, one interpretation, right? I, I, the, yeah, the Big Bang interpretation, right. Big Bang Theory interpretation. And also, you're laughing with him like, ha ha, he's so funny because like, he's negging that girl. Yeah, dude. You know, and you also are seeing people would, I, I could totally see a certain type of person saying, yeah, he got her at the end. He totally denied her. You know, yeah, dude. No, I really do think that it's like it's like this Big Bang Theory philosophy of comedy almost, where it's like they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. They're like, we're gonna laugh with this guy, but also you're kind of gonna be on his side because you know you're you're this type of guy too in a in a sense. Yeah, that's kind of a weird like. It is. It's a it's a weird denial almost mm. oh god no it's really gross yeah. dude it's like, like i i, I uh there's like there's some um what is it like video essay on big bang theory and i forgot who did it was it uh wise i think it was wise correct yeah. i think it was wise correct i would just love to see them take a crack at paul blart man because i i forget how the first movie was but yeah two dude is doing is doing some really i think like Low well, key dangerous shit with like the philosophy it has. Well, because it's like it seems like the filmmakers are aware and say, you know what, F- fuck the midwestern dads who are into this. Yeah, and that's a good. Yeah, that's also good to bring up. Yeah, they're gonna love the shit out of this at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's so much to- toxic like arenas that are being tossed around like in multiple levels Mm -hmm. because like it's a mean spirited intent by the filmmakers yes and also it's a mean spirited viewing by the audience yeah which is insane dude that that taps into my thing my thing as john my thing my hatred of kevin james is that I, and I think I, uh, uh, not me, I think. I think I may have been in director showdown. I think it may have been Brent. I agree right, with him right. in a lot of these views. Brent's, Brent's is such a sexy guy. You know? He is. Yeah. Absolutely. God, he's such a good looking guy. Mm. And and uh, I think he had a recent tangent about how much he hates Kevin James that I really agreed with. Mm-hmm. Um, and it taps into it taps into what you were just saying. It's like the mean-spirited nature of it. Mm. It's that he wants to laugh at the, the, the people that the movie is for, but yeah. he also wants to portray them yeah. and make them funny in by being. It's mean almost to the them. most sadistic thing you could probably. It do. is, dude. It kind of is. It's like a yeah. very toxic. And they're making uh, money thing. off of it. They made over a hundred million dollars on this movie. That is, I mean, it's like almost like an evil genius thing. Like it's so, it's so sadistic. Oh my god! Yeah, man. It's uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, Kevin James, I just think has always been. He's always uh personified the worst aspects of like Adam Sandler's crew. I right, think. right. I, th- I think every every. So the thing is, a lot of people hate on Adam Sandler and the stuff that he does. I think Adam Sandler has just gotten lazy and he just likes cashing checks. I mean, that deserves all the hate and sure. Yeah. No. And, and I can yeah. agree with that. I, I just think to me, Kevin James is more dangerous and even worse in that he's manipulative. I think the choices that he makes in the different projects that he, he chooses, um, are worse because they, they are actively like manipulating the people that they're mm, for. Mm. And I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case with Adam Sandler. I think mm. he's just gotten lazy. He's just like, I'm a, I'm a dad. Uh, I don't know. I'm in over my head. And that's like all of his, what all of his movies are now yeah, pretty much, yeah. you know? Um, but, uh, so, you know, they, they get to the convention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and he, cause, cause, because he already makes a crew. He has a crew already. Dude, he gets a crew from the get-go. He gets a crew. Now, um, the name I dropped earlier, I already forgot it. What's the guy's name? The, the Indian guy. I, I love him. Um, he shows up at the pool and he starts hugging everybody. And it's great. Uh, uh, I forgot his name. Is he on the cast list? Let you have me, it pulled up. See. Um, um, there's, there's Saul Gundermutt. Well, we will okay. talk about. Okay, well, we're going to circle back around Ramos. Was he Ramos? No, not Ramos. How about Lorenzo? No. Nadia? No. Gino? No. Khan? Khan, what's the last name? M- Mom- Modi. Con-, Con Moby, that's it. Moby. Um, yeah, best character in the movie by far. Every time it cuts to him, you're getting a good bit. 
Because uh, his bit is he's always falling asleep. That's all he does. All he does is hug people and fall asleep. That's like... And that's you, that's who I would be in a movie. And I you think. gotta you gotta give it props for the you gotta give the um the uh, the editor props for cutting to him. You know, yeah, it's it's good. It's a good mm. bit. But he's one of the guys that yeah, pretty early on, Blart kind of uh, builds a crew. He gets that guy. He gets Gundermutt. Um, Gundermutt, who is uh, basically like an Andrew Dice Clay post stroke. Is what I kind of piece together. Yeah. Um, yeah. His yeah. hairline is insane. It looks like he had a full head of hair, and somebody like cut off the whole forward portion of the the haircut, and so he just has this insane like back half. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like a weird balding thing. How would you describe that? It's hair? like a car. He's like a cartoon character. It's like it's like a. Uh... It's like a seat, like you know, you the the back of a seat. You know, you could like you could probably yeah. sit on his head. Yeah, and you have like a, a nice chair. like reinforcement on your back to yeah. keep your back straight. For sure, and his and his bald head is is where you would place your butt on. Well, <laughs> well, then like the second that he comes on screen, very early in the movie, I think soon after Blart arrives at the hotel, you and I fucking looked at Delphin each other. And John. Del- Delphin and John looked yeah. at each other and went, oh boy, who's this oh guy boy. walking on screen? And, uh, oh man, yeah. G- Gunder, Gunder Mutt? Gunder Mutt. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's the bits where you have ridiculous names. Mm-hmm. You Gunder know, names Mutt. are funny. What was that That's one? Oh, we'll get to him. Oh, no, what's his name? Myrtle? Myrtle? Oh, no, it's like, it's the Myrtle. T name. No, 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 you're no, right. Myr- yeah, Myrtle. Myrtle. Uh, but the spelling was it's, insane. M-U-E-H-T-E-R-R. Like a bunch of just yeah useless letters. Well, and I did appreciate, like, the joke of it where, <laughs> like, uh, Paul Blart is sneaking in to, like, the basement or something. He's, like, sneaking yeah. into the secure yeah, art we, room. Yeah, we jumped ahead a little bit, but we, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. and then and then a, a security guy comes up, and then he looks at his name tag, and that's his name tag. Mm. And he's just like, uh, uh... And it's just, like, the most insane name. You don't even know how to pronounce it. And then he just calls the guy Turtle, and that's, like, the bit from that's, then on out. That's very good. Yeah, it's a good bit. So, you know, they, they, they're, they're hanging out with his new crew because... Everybody knows of what everyone knows the famous Paul Blart and his Black Friday oh yeah uh, shenanigans. Yeah, apparently we missed out on the whole Black Well, apparently I saw it and forgot it. I I remember nothing from Paul Blart 1, but apparently it involved Black Friday. Um I think it must have been some kind of a a a, a thief break into a mall on Black Friday. Something like that. I mean, it was 10 yeah. years ago, mm-hmm. literally 10 years ago, which is mm-hmm. insane to me. You know, what, what's going to happen in Paul Blart 3 when there's no more malls left because Amazon's consuming all everything? Well, maybe that's the metaphor they roll with. Maybe they uh, they roll with the metaphor of empty malls. That entropy equal. reigns and then cha- and chaos reigns. Well, and that that Paul Blart is is empty emotionally and that uh, he has nothing inside. So true. so you have this like visual image at the beginning where it's him just on his uh, uh, what do you call those? Uh, uh, fucking blart mobiles uh, he's oh on his blart God. mobile segways segway he's on his segway his signature segway Se- signature segway rolling through an empty mall and there's cobwebs and all the stores are closed mm. and he's his clothes are tattered his daughter has long left him and, and he, he, uh, he's like he's physically aged you know yeah well well aged. he's so fat that he can't even walk. So so it's like his his fat rolls have kind of like melded with the Segway scooter. It, 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 yeah, it's it is a it, it is fused. His hands are fused to the handlebars of the. Yeah, Segway. and he's he's almost like this this mutant at this point. It's, it's it's almost kind of like a like a creature from the Black Lagoon scenario now, where where nobody wants to even like interact or look at this guy. He's mm-hmm. a monster. But and, and he's like he goes yeah. around this empty mall and just says, I have to protect this mall 
I have to protect this Pro- mall. Or what's his slogan? He said we're, we have it on in the background. He has a slogan that he says, not a slogan, but a catchphrase almost. Uh, Adam Sandler pr- is Lord. <laughs> Adam Sandler is God. Uh, no, it's like protect someone every day. No, help help somebody or something. Help somebody like every day. Yeah. And he's just saying that to himself, help and he's somebody. lost his mind a decade prior. Um, but yeah, and he's just rolling around this mall all Help by himself. Help somebody today. Help somebody, somebody today. Help somebody. Help somebody. And then yeah, and then it's a group of ragtag kids who who never even heard of what malls are because they're gener- generation yeah. Z and the YouTube generation. They don't. Yeah. They've never been to a mall in their life because they order everything on Amazon. Yeah, they just see this gross, mm-hmm. fat monster rolling around in the machine. In this big building that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And what do they, what do, they do? Um, what? They shoot their slingshots at him. <laughs> and they throw rocks at him because he's a monster. And he's ugly. And finally, <clears throat> the, the monster that we know he is on the inside yeah. has taken over the outside. <laughs> And he has become his true and final form. So Paul Blart 2, I think, in many ways, is the perfect act two of the trilogy. Mm-hmm. And I really hope that we do get Paul Blart 3 because I think I think our pitch just now yeah. is... What's David Cronenberg up to? I think Cronenberg is the only one to bring this home. Right. I really And, do. you know, Cronenberg was reviewed on Director's Showdown. Yeah. Um, he was one of the directors they did over there. And that was a great season. It and was. I said, you know, I suggest... Everyone should listen that season. It's pretty good. And I, I think uh, to take another segment, I guess you could say that what we just talked about was what would Cronenberg do? With yeah, what Paul would Blart Cr- three? Yeah. He would have like gross like veins that would like come from his hand and mm-hmm. fused with the yeah, with the, absolutely. Uh, he would have been combined with his yeah. Segway. Um, uh, yeah, it would have been it would have been disgusting and cynical and, and, yeah, yeah. and gross. And uh, I, I really, fr- I and hope be like that late he's, stage capitalism, like Cummins. Yeah, I hope that he's the one to really bring this trilogy home. Saying mm-hmm. like twenty twenty five, I think we'll be ready for that. And yeah. Kevin James will will uh, you know have have long been done with his career. And I think yeah, he'll, be- he'll he'll probably have lost. A foot or two due to diabetes. Due to diabetes. Yeah, like, like you had said when we were watching this, uh, it, it already does appear that the diabetes is taking him. Mm. Right? Because um, he's, he's got uh, skinny legs and a fat body, and that doesn't look too boy. healthy. He's a big boy, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think the diabetes is getting to him. Mm. I think it is. <laughs> Paul Blart to Mall Cop. And it's... <laughs> And so they, they – where were we? We were at, at – he was at the convention, and he sees sees the uh, fancy – the fancy guns and stuff. Not the fancy guns. The fancy devices. Yeah, because it's a convention. And yeah. so we have this fun little uh, – Mon- This movie is montages. Ooh, boy, yeah. Oh, they love montages. The the Sandler crew, ooh, oh. man, they love cutting those corners, man. <laughs> <laughs> give, give, give me give, give me a movie that's like a, a smidge over ninety minutes. Mm. Fill it with about four or five montages. Mm-hmm. Let's cash those checks, baby. Let's and at cash least one scene in the montage where someone gets hurt. Yeah, absolutely. There's yeah, always you have to. You, you have, have to have somebody to have get hurt. One they scene. They love that. Like that that one chick that's part of their crew. She hits herself with the baton she was playing with. It's so funny. That's right. Because she hurts herself. Well, and then it is important to know that this movie does have a lot of payoffs that are set up early on. I will give it that unironically. It, it does set things up later. They're very obvious, and you know that they're obviously setups. But this montage is basically setting up some uh, fun little uh, third act uh, bits like like the uh, what are they it called? It sets Marbles? up for a uh, it sets up for an Edgar Wright style yep. prep scene. Yeah, where they yeah. where they all get geared up, and mm-hmm. uh, there's a fun little marble scene, a scene with uh, yeah. Paul Blart being bad at shooting sandbags. Sandbags. Yeah, because um, there's a device that shoots sandbags, and the marble thing. Just so our our listeners who may not have seen this masterpiece of film, yeah. Is used so people will trip. Yeah, you know marbles like it, like in Home Alone. I mean, I'm sure Kevin. Yeah, 
Holy shit. <laughs> Did Kevin from from Home Alone no. grow up in the is it, did he change his name and become Paul <laughs> Blart Malkop? Is yeah. that what happened? Yeah. Fuck. That's got to be like a fan theory online, right? Fan. So, dear listeners, do you think Kevin from Home Alone grew up to be Paul Blart? Let us know. On, let us know on Twitter and make sure you tweet at Director Showdown. Mm-hmm. Because they should, those guys should know about it. Those guys should know about it too. And and Revenge of the Sequel. Yeah, of course. All of us. Yeah, yeah. Delphin, John, Caceres, mm-hmm. my name. Yeah. Uh, Brent Kong. Yeah. Who who's not you, but a very yeah a, a close uh, friend who needs to know about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so there's that little montage there of all the cool, fun little things. We got to get into Neil McDonough. Uh, dumb dumb Dugan himself is in this film and timeline. Timeline. You all remember Timeline? Remember timeline? With uh, Paul Walker? Yeah. Where they, where they took May a... May God rest his soul. They, where they took a um, Michael Crichton novel and made it into a movie called Timeline. Yeah. yeah. The the Jurassic Park effect. Yeah. 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 And it uh, benefited them in all and the same And that's all ways. we need to say about that. Yeah. Uh, Neil McDonough is the villain. They want to steal art. Yeah. And that's kind of all that happens with that. Right. Um, they're setting up a heist. Frankly, I wish we could uh, have seen their movie. I think it would have been more entertaining. They were, unironically, they were so cool. Yeah, all that stuff was really fun. And yeah. uh, it would have been cool to see them uh, be the protagonists. Like, the, yeah. like they, there was one part where one of the thieves had like a plunger with a camera inside. Mm-hmm. No, like a, no, screens, little tiny screens inside where he plugs onto the camera on the roof and it projects the same exact image. So you wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah. It would just look like a normal day. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. And I don't know if it is kind of cool or I was in the desert looking for water. Kind of cool. I I think that was most of this movie. I I think, uh, and, and like I said, we have it playing in the background. We're getting to maybe the most, fascinating scene in the movie. So Paul Blart, if you guys are familiar with the character, um, he needs, uh, what is it? Uh, sugar, right? He needs sugar. Or it's a bit. Out? Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. Um, it's and like so, he, he had, I mean, diabetes. You know, it's, I, uh, yeah, I think it is. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's running through the, uh, not the hallway. It's like the main entry place for like the hotel. And he trips and falls and he passes out because he hasn't had enough sugar. He hasn't eaten enough sugar. And so there's a little girl eating an ice cream cone that's dripping. Wait, and, he, and then she tells her father, hey, those are some pretty flowers. Can I draw on them? Because every parent under, goes to that sort of thing that kids just want to draw on everything yeah absolutely i mean i remember when i was a kid and i wanted to draw on flowers because Sculpted i was a flowers. normal a normal human child mm-hmm. and that's what normal human children yeah, want to do yeah, yeah, yeah um so yeah paul blart uh kind of squirms his fat uh uh, body on over to where the ice cream is dripping, and we get like a full 30, 45 second. And scene. that's not a, that's not like, no, that's not a joke at all. That's him. That's like, we just really like a minute. We watch ice cream drip into and onto Kevin James' face for a long period of time. And if you were to mor- morph that into black and white. Well, like, I just don't know if we need to even continue with what you're saying. <laughs> You would have a very interesting interpretation of liquid dropping yeah. on his mouth and his tongue flailing at that liquid. And I'm not saying that someone should do it. I'm just saying that it's out there. And it's I'm just thing. saying, you know, if you put in black and white, you won't know what type of liquid. It could be, you know, paint. It could be glue. 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 It could be anything. That's it all we're saying. It could be anything. Um, and, it's, so, and it's just seeing his fat tongue flail at whatever that is. 
So yeah, Paul Blart, he's, he's slowly, what we're not mentioning is that his daughter was taken. Yeah. Um, you you got it. You got it. You got a Liam Neeson situation in this mm-hmm. one. It's taken in Vegas with, uh, <laughs> take it with, in Vegas with, uh, <laughs> fucking it. Blart himself. <laughs> what if, what if taken, but Blart. <laughs> In Vegas. That's kind of Paul Blart, too. Um, Neil McDonough I have, very, I have a very special set of skills. Special set of skills. That's that's all I'm going to... I don't know where else to go with that. No, bit, that's all there is. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, Blart is trying... God, Jesus, man. Yeah, pa- Paul Blart goes back up to the counter to... Uh, what was her name? The the manager? Davina. D- Davina. Divina. He fucking Divina. negs her again and, like, manipulates her. And she... her You could literally see the pussy juices flowing straight out of her pant her, just lines. Her, her... What? Her what lines? Her pantaloons. Good Christ, man. <laughs> I don't know, and, Delphin. I don't know. And, you know... <laughs> It's like it's almost like they designed her outfit to be masculine just to bring her down, you know, a notch. Well, yeah, dude, and that's that's the that's the crazy awful thing about this movie is that it's like yeah, I mean ev- every scene he's like breaking her down psychologically. Yeah. Yeah. Until like at the end she's like completely broken down and it's like I think I love him. I think I love him and it's like yeah. oh no. Yeah. No, you don't love me. That's like ultimately where it ends. He denies. Yeah, he denies her, and it's like, fuck the like like the the subplot of him and her are like the the the, the point where I'm like, thing, yeah. yeah, this is like the most toxic garbage on the planet Earth. I and think. I feel bad. Uh, I feel bad for um, R- R- Rainy Rodriguez who plays Rainy her. Rodriguez. Yeah, and yeah, I mean she's like she's yeah. like a solid like. So actress she, and she's she really was, pretty and, she was born in um Bryan, texas so she's a texas native oh cool gotta represent you know was she in anything else because i feel like she looks pretty familiar too and she um you know she's growing up in you know this small texas town and watched all these films maybe grew you know, up on sandler maybe movies. maybe watched maybe watched um kubrick films spielberg films um Maybe watched uh, Cronenberg yeah, or Rifen, Carpenter. Rifen, Carpenter, uh, uh, Burton, maybe Burton, even, you know, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. You know, and those were covered by Director Showdown. Yeah, good directors for yeah. the most part, other than season three. But I mean, yeah. uh, you know, good directors. And so she watched them and said, I want to be in Hollywood. I want to follow my dreams, be an actress, work really hard, and go, go, go try it out. Go to L.A. See, see what's going on. And then Adam Sandler comes along and says, "Hey, what do you want to be in your movie? You want to be in my Hollywood movie with Kevin James? It's a sequel." <laughs> yeah, and then she says, "Oh my god, this is my big break! I can be in a Kevin James movie. These things are are big. These Everyone things are good. Knows. He's a household name, Adam Sandler. Yeah, household he's, he's name Sandler's Kevin James. Boy. And she says, you know." I want to be not like the other girls, though. I want. I don't want that typical weak woman. I want yeah. to be oh, progressive. I, I play a hotel manager. A GM. The yeah. head wow. of a hotel. Okay, let me check out the script. No, no, not until I sign on. Okay, well, this is a great opportunity for me. I'm going to sign on and do this. Tell me, Adam, is she still alive? Please tell me she's still alive. Yeah, and hasn't she is. done anything. Oh wait, Rainy Rodriguez is the um, is his daughter. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> so Daniel Some Alonzo. Live, live racism. What's her name? Danielle Alonzo. Yeah, she's from New York City. But we're gonna keep going with that. We're gonna keep going with this. <gasps> the, these Hollywood elites. Yeah, these <laughs> these East Coast liberals. And and she was in you know. Well, yeah, because well, I, I feel like I recognize her. She's in uh, um, Rekill. Well, <laughs> Black Knight. She's in Black Knight. Wait, Martin Lawrence is Black Knight? What else is there, man? Whoa, I feel like maybe I recognize her from that. I watched Black Knight yeah, a bunch Black when Knight. I was younger. Um, the Hills Advice 2. Wrong oh, I rec- two. yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognize mm-hmm. her from that. The Collector. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she comes from Texas and... Uh, 
you know, she says, fine, I'll take this movie. Why not? Yeah. I'm going to be a strong, uh, independent woman. By by God, I bet this is the last thing that's going to be on her IMDb page, unfortunately. You know, she had one more film after Paul Bart. Oh, Paul pl- Bart please Paul tell Bart. me it's something good. Lawless Range that I can't click the hyperlink oh, on Wikipedia. Boy. So, oh, you know. No. Um, <sighs> well. We wish her the best here. At yeah, she's doing, great on, she's, she's doing great on TV. She's in a lot of TV shows. So. Oh, she's, that's good. She's like that's a, good. So, I, I yeah, think yeah. it's something from that. I think she's probably on fucking, I don't know, like hmm. NCIS Miami or whatever the fuck they're yeah, on she, now. Yeah, she's like, on like one of those things. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so um, good for her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Paul Blart fucking negs her the whole movie. He's a piece yeah. of fucking shit. He sucks. This movie's terrible. Um, and yep. they, he, they, they end up... Um, um, doing a, getting a whole, so, whole all sorts of shenanigans. You know, he gets in a fight with a bird. Yeah, you know, let's talk about that scene a little bit. Yeah. Um, so he uh, he stumbles into w- w- okay. What is this room? Because it's it's oh. like in the hotel, but it's like it's got grass and it's like a weird park set up where there's a guy playing piano. And I think it might be in the Paris. Was it the Paris Casino? It, what is it inside? Or I, I assumed it was. Maybe it's well, outside. Well, Vegas has all sorts of that shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And a huge bird walks in, and Paul Blart has this whole interaction that turns into a big fight scene with mm. the bird. Um, and he's like body slamming the bird. The bird's body slamming him. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it yeah. cuts back and forth between weird practical bird and uh, like CG bird. Uh, all the while, the pianist is like still playing. Yeah, which is fun. I kind of like that. I kind of like the uh, the notion of the, the juxtapose, pianist who yeah. like keeps playing and uh, Paul Blart's fighting a fucking bird in the background. Yeah, and I love I love the great uh, direction that. Mm-hmm. Um, Andy Finkman does. Yeah. Um, when he cuts between a doll bird, mm-hmm. a real bird, and a CGI bird. There's three different birds in existence in that mm-hmm. scene. Yeah. And it's very and I, cleverly boy, I done. I wish I could say it's seamless. I wish I could. Yeah. But I can't. <laughs> Uh, and uh, let's see. You know, speaking of Andy Finkman, what else has he done? Let's yeah, see. Yeah, let's let's go through the Finkin the the Finkman filmography here. Who's your daddy? Two thousand two director co writer. Hmm. Who's your daddy? I don't know. I sure don't know who your daddy is. Uh, I Mr. certainly Finkman. am not. Uh, she's the man director. Okay. Nope. The, the game plan director. Nope. Race to Witch Mountain director. Oh, with the Rock. Yeah, how fun. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> a, c- a couple of kids. I forgot who the kids are. You again. Okay. Director. All right. Parental guidance. Nope. <laughs> uh, Paul, of course, Paul Blart, mm-hmm. male cop, male, male cop, male ball cop, cop two, <laughs> <laughs> male cop two, ball cop two, uh, scouts guide to zombie apocalypse producer though, not director there. Well, Playing with Fire director twenty twenty that has not come out. Yet. Oh boy, we're yeah we're eagerly anticipating that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's boy. from Texas Midland. Well, you can't. That's w- a shame. Yeah, and he's and he graduated from Texas Tech. Mm, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Finkman, uh, really, uh, yeah, it's a bang up bang up director. Did a killer job on this movie. Mm-hmm. Um. And you know who does directors? Director Showdown. Director Showdown does do directors. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they're ever going to cover Finkman. I don't know. Maybe. What, are the, what a fascinating filmography that would be. You should, you should like, so listeners, you should tweet at them and see if, like, they should do, like. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe hashtag Finkman. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag season seven. At, at Director Question Showdown. Yeah, yeah, at Director Showdown. Yeah. Um, so playing in the background is maybe my favorite scene in the film. Uh, it's where Paul Blart stumbles into, uh, yeah, he, he literally stumbles yeah. into it. Every I, I, guys, I, I need you to understand something. Um, Paul Blart stumbles into pretty much every single moment of his he, life. He's he, stumbling into, he's it. like a force. 
like of of nature like he's like yeah. this energy that just has an infinite um an infinite potential that keeps just moving and it's just like almost like a tornado i think would that's be a it. really good metaphor like because a, he a brings tornado, destruction everywhere he goes he ruins yeah. everything that he touches a tornado that has diabetes and needs sugar to it, maintain its its damage yeah and, it, and, and and is also a terrible husband a terrible father and a terrible yeah. uh security guard yeah um, like imagine if you were meet a tornado at the bar and they just neg you and you're like i want to sleep with that oh tornado my god yeah that scene sucks that scene sucks paul oh, blurt walks god. up because he sees a lady being hassled uh hey, and then he, i want my wife to be in this movie yeah, that's Adam Sandler's wife. Um, she has not been in anything since some early, early, early Adam Sandler movies. I think she's in, uh, but she she finally came out of Adam Sandler's. Uh, yeah, for some for a reason. Bit. Yeah, who knows why? Uh, yeah, um, Kevin like tells the guy to fuck off. It's like another one of the security guards who's like super drunk and hitting on her. Mm-hmm. And basically like, uh, oh, Paul Nick, Blart, no, Nick, Nick Totoro. Yeah. John Totoro's brother, Nick Totoro is like, <laughs> not even drunk as shit, like nagging her. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Paul Blart walks up and starts nagging her and is basically like, listen, you should be thankful for guys like me. Uh, because, and it's just this like gross, this whole movie just like leaves a fucking gross feeling in the pit of your stomach. Um, and, yeah, that scene sucks. But uh, what were we talking about? Yeah, the Cirque du, Cir- God damn it, Cirque du Soleil Delay, yeah. scene um, is kind of good. I, I kind of like the the music and the visuals of it, mostly because it literally just steals from like a Cirque du Dirt. Jeez, I can't say that word anymore. Cirque de Soleil is that is that how it's pronounced? Cirque Cirque du Soleil. I think it's Cirque de Soleil. No. No, that's, that's not right. Circus. Cir- Circle A. Holy shit, dude. I don't know. <laughs> John, get get this right. Cir- c- hold on. I think it's Cirque du Soleil. I think it's... Wow, now that just sounds insane when now, I say it out loud. I think we're saying it too much, so it's like losing... Yeah, like, it's losing meaning. meaning now. Cirque, de, Cirque du Soleil. Cirque yeah. du Soleil. Cirque yeah, du yeah. Cirque du Soleil. Um, he stumbles in, and he's this like fat cop who has like angel wings on, and he becomes like a part of their act. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, post stroke, Andrew Dice Clay and his wife are watching the performance, and he's like, "Whoa, I didn't know he was in this. Oh, wow, this is crazy, or whatever the fuck he says." Um, and I don't know. That's fun. That's a fun. <laughs> but yeah, and they're, and they're all bit. about it. And he says, uh, "This Cirque du Soleil, uh, it has a." It has a pool like inside. And it's an indoor pool, and that's the joke. Oh, that's the that's so weird. That was so fucking strange. He's like, yeah, yeah. And it's an it's like an inside it's like an inside pool, and that's played like a joke. Yeah. in the movie, and you're but like, it's just like more of like a statement right. and observation about like what yeah what it is. Which yeah. let's be fair, that's like most of the the comedy in the movie. I think. Yep, it's kind of this like observational. Uh, He's fat. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like a statement about something. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. It gets a lot of mileage out of, uh, he's fat. Ha ha. That, that, that seems to be like really what they, what they love. like. The, the only breaks you get from the constant incessant, incessant barrage of comedy is during montages. Yeah. That's like the only breathing room you have. Well, yeah, and then like the montages just by sheer uh montaginess are like the most digestible parts of the movie. You know, it's like, okay, I can do Oh, thank God. I can like oh, thank God I can breathe again. Uh-huh. Uh and it's it's such a shame that there's just so much shit in this movie because I remember there being like oh, one of them's actually happening right now. Okay, so the uh, what's what are they called? Like mini kiss, mini kiss, mini kiss. So they set up the set up at the beginning of when he first arrives in Vegas. That uh, oh, uh, the security guard convention has been moved to a smaller room. Uh, mini kiss is playing in the the main uh, was it called a like convention room or something? Yeah. And later on, Paul Blart gets into a 
elevator and then it kind of zooms out and then you have a bunch of little mini uh little like adorable mini yeah little kisses. people playing kiss yeah. and uh it's just a fun little it's like for for a couple of seconds the movie understands how jokes work yeah and you're like oh that's kind of fun and it's actually like a ridiculous like thing you know and it's like i wish this this movie would just like double down on like insanity yeah because it doesn't fully commit to insanity if it did then this yeah. movie would be good commitment is actually a really good thing to bring up about this movie because it it does feel really non-committal to any one thing it like it really does want to just do everything yeah either very bad or really mediocre to kind of like appease everybody right. it like it like wants to be like i don't know like a like a shitty piece of cake that you buy at the gas station <laughs> you know and it's like it's like it's not going to be very good it might give you food poisoning and but midwestern fathers will eat it up oh mid midwestern fathers are gonna love it absolutely <laughs> they're gonna be like oh i've been to vegas yeah that's a hassle taking your family there I don't know what that accent is. It's probably it's like yeah. A, that's, like like two, a that's like Boston. Yeah, I guess. Bronx, hey. Um But uh, oh, hey, you watched that Plar Plar Bar? You movie? watched that Plar Bar Two Mar Carp? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mars, we're gonna go watch the Plar Bar movie. Plar Bar. <laughs> Man, John, you do a great uh, Midwestern accent. You bet I do. I, yeah. I love. I love it. I love the accent. Yeah. Love, uh, I love all the times you on the Revenge of the Sequel podcast when you do impressions that, that I whip out that accent. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite bits. Um, but yeah, it really does feel like it's just trying to. This is such a fucking like lowest com- like common denominator movie. Mm. It's like what is the base level of like human desire that we can <laughs> like function for yeah, yeah. so that like a fucking uh yeah, like Midwest or even like southern dad and his wife can get away from the kids yeah, for yeah. a couple hours, go to Olive Garden mm. and then go see fucking Paul. Now, Martin now too. we're we're going we're going to have a fancy night. Yeah, we're going. We're going to Olive Branch. Now we're going to Olive Branch, and I'm going to get the taste of uh, the Italy that comes with Italian the food. Now, Marge, this is the one day per year that we can get mm. Italian food. Mm-hmm. And, and I you want you to keep me, it under fourteen dollars. You, you promised me it. you would be quiet this time. You promised me. So let's go Alt Garden. <laughs> Have our bre- limitless breadsticks. Bread now they give you limitless salad, but I'm not really a salad guy, March. You know that. You know I'm not a salad. I ain't man. one of them vegans. <laughs> Those coastal elites. The coastal elites. <laughs> not eating meat. <laughs> not us. Not us. No, sir. I'm gonna shove this meat down your throat, down March. My golden. <laughs> And then we're gonna we're gonna go to uh, name of that Cineplex. <laughs> What's the name? Of that? Regal Regal Cinemas. Yeah, yeah, for, it's Regal Regal Cinemas. Fourteen, and we're gonna watch Paul Blart too. And you know, you know what I like about that theater is that when you walk in, it's sticky. You don't know what you've been stepping on. Yeah, the seats creak. They ain't too comfortable. Get a nice big bucket of popcorn. <laughs> you get free refills. We're gonna get a refill on our way out, Marge. Yeah. I'm gonna eat it on the car ride home. And you might, you might just lose your shoe because it's stuck on the ground <laughs> because of how sticky that. Oh, could. those floors are so sticky, Marge. <laughs> those, that's my favorite part. That's my favorite part. <laughs> You can't even lift your feet during the whole runtime of the film. Um, and those are the folks that uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 are just, oh, fucking, they got their fucking. You think it was like, okay, so this trigger movie. Trigger sight on them. This movie mm-hmm. made. A hundred. I, I forgot the exact figure. It's over a hundred. Yeah, it was a hundred and seven point six million dollars. Yep. So, did this fella we just talked about watch it about, what's the math here? 
Uh, uh, I think it'd probably be uh, like 10 million times. Yeah. <laughs> No man, because uh, I'll tell you what he he got stuck to the he got stuck to the floor and he couldn't move, so he just watched this movie like over and over again. I think <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't leave the theater. Leave. Marge, you're gonna have to leave me here. I can't lift my damn boots off of this here uh, floor. I'm stuck. Um, <laughs> this movie strikes me as the type of movie that I wonder what the DVD slash Blu-ray sales are for this movie. Like, I truly do. Because they've got to be, there's got to be like 10 people who bought this, right? No, it's like, it's like those, the, 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 uh, the family that like, they buy, they just buy Blu-rays uh, and DVDs. I, I had a friend growing up, me, yeah. John, I had a friend named Jared in mm-hmm. California yeah. where I, John, have visited before. Yeah. Possibly, uh, but I had a friend named Jared there whose dad every single week would go buy all of the new DVDs that came out. Yeah, because they were rich as fuck. I guess I, I don't understand how they could afford it, but yeah, and they all they they probably are and the not sole. even watch it. This is like yeah, they would always that. be wrapped still every time I'd go over to to Jared's house. Yeah, um, good old Jared. How's he doing? Ah, uh, who knows? I think he's probably still smoking weed and hanging out. That's what he always did. Um, <laughs> went to his bar mitzvah. That was fun. Bar mitzvahs are a lot of fun. I recommend it for hmm. all you listeners out there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's got to be those families that just like the dad goes out and just buys all the new movies, I guess. And yeah. that's like the only people who would buy this movie because it has a, a three out of five on Amazon, which for Amazon is like not that good. And I think even three cinema score had like a B minus, huh. which is also bad for cinema score. I feel like I saw that on Wikipedia. I don't know if that's true, but throw out what you think. Yeah. The RT score is a Rotten Tomatoes score. Oh, this is a fun game. You and I, Delphin and John, definitely not Adam and Brent like to do. Yeah. Where we like to guess the Rotten Tomatoes scores for movies. I think, okay, so the first one had a very bad rating. I think this one, oh gosh, I'm going to say 23. 5%. Whoa! 5% based on 60 reviews with an average score of 2.5 out of 10. The site consensus reads, bathe in flop sweat and bereft of purpose. Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 strings together fat shaming humor and segue sight gags with uniformly unfunny results. Very good. Very good consensus. I yeah, like that boy, one. oh boy, 5%. That is uh, appropriate. So, really breaks down the 95% of coastal elites who just don't understand this kind of movie, yeah, frankly. Fucking coastal elites. <laughs> who don't understand the, uh, the Disney shills. All those Disney shills, man. Who decided to put down Chad Sony. What if no <laughs> all bullshit aside, what yeah. if uh when Captain Marvel was getting like review bombed? Yeah. What if like Paul Blart 2 was the movie that they were like that fighting they, for? They, they fucking reign again, yeah. What about fucking Blart 2 all these Disney shills slamming Paul <laughs> Paul and crew? Paul and cr- Am Sandler, he's great. <laughs> oh man, that would why do I have a feeling like that's like, like low key? They're probably like totally behind all the Adam Sandler films. Yeah, I mean that would make sense. All the Blart heads, yeah, all the Blart boys out there, fucking, the ridiculous uh, Six fans, the uh, yeah, you know, the, the people who keep Adam Sandler um, career. You know, wide, that's wide open. yeah, that's interesting because movies like this now are usually just done on Netflix because like uh, Sandler has that overall deal with Netflix all right. and he puts out all of his like trash uh, garbage comedies um, or he goes on vacation with his friends. Yeah. And- he takes a vacation and says, yeah, get a camera crew together, fucking throw together a garbage script with bad yeah. gags and we'll film it. Just pay us each like $8 million. Like each. they're all like coked out of their minds. And like the, the film editor is like, 
th- the most heroic human being yeah. in the world to somehow to make a cohesive. Fr- frankly, like, no film. matter how much he got paid, yeah. he's underpaid. I think we could just agree that like the editor on all of these Sandler Co. movies yeah. is underpaid, is an underpaid hero of these movies. Because uh, yeah, just the amount of like footage. Uh, like, let me let me com- rephrase that. The amount of shit that he had to sift yeah. through to edit into like somewhat coherent movie. The, the amount of center frame close ups he had to deal with. <sighs> yeah. Oh boy. And um, and, uh, and and lazy zoom ins and you know f- uh, quote unquote fight scenes mm-hmm. that he had to piece together. This movie is uh, a fucking doozy. Mm-hmm. Can you hand me that? Uh, speaking of our sponsor today, Orange Vanilla Coke, gang. Um, ooh, give me a sip of that that tasty goodness. Orange Vanilla Coke. Orange Vanilla Coke. Orange Vanilla Coke. I actually wanted to kind of talk about this fight scene because I don't know you felt. To me, I was like kind of entertained during it. Like it, it felt at least kind of kinetic in a way the rest of the movie wasn't. I don't know. I. Your your uh, look and hesitation is definitely uh, not agreeing with me. So maybe I'll just stop talking. Um, so <laughs> this this fight scene is between the security security convention crew. Yeah, and that, and we haven't really been covering the plot, but basically yeah. it came to a head. Uh, Paul Blart to get his daughter back, blah, 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 fights the art thieves, blah, blah, blah. Right, you fucking know right, exactly. exactly. Well, you can fill in exactly, all of the blanks exactly, with dumb exactly, bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> and they end up, instead of the bad guys shooting them because they have guns, mm-hmm. they decide, you know what? We'll, we'll play on y- your your level and we'll fight you. Yeah. Hand-to-hand combat. Mm-hmm. And our good boy, um, what's his name? Uh, Blart or Neil McDonough? No, no. no. Um, our our good boy Khan. Oh, Khan Moby. Up. Oh, dude, if you're gonna talk about the best joke in the fucking movie, I li- I literally, truly, earnestly laughed very hard oh, when this joke. Happened. I I did as well. It was great. So okay, all the all of the gang is coming together for this final fight scene. They're all like teaming up. And and his name is Con Moby, right? Con Moby, the guy who's been falling asleep like in every scene of the movie. It's really funny. Best character by far in the whole picture. Uh, he shows up wearing like a cape, and Neil McDonough comments on it. He's like, "You have a you have a superhero with you." And then he says it kind of like he throws it off. It's mm-hmm. like sarcastic, and he's like, "What, Con? Why are you wearing a cape?" And he said, "I came from the barber. He came from the barber." He was getting a haircut. And he just fucking ran out of there yeah. in the middle of getting a haircut. So imagine this older, six, maybe 60-year-old. 60, 60 plus. Yeah, 60 is generous. Indian fellow. Indian guy. Sleepy man. Sleepy man. Yeah. Probably comes into your hair salon mm-hmm. and says, hey, could I get a haircut? And you're like, sure. Yeah, and then he falls well, asleep while he's he getting falls- his haircut. Hey, absolutely. It makes the haircut easier. He's asleep in there, and then he gets a call from his best bud. He gets a text, and he just runs out of the barber shop. He didn't say a word to you. Yeah, you haven't even started the haircut. <laughs> it's. I just want to talk about this for like five minutes because I, I think it's such a good bit because it's one of those jokes that it, it it actually does require a little bit of like mental math and thinking about the prior I just I just circumstance I just don't know if that was the intent like it, it's almost like we we are I mean you and I Delphin and John yeah are you know smarter minutes. than the average you know movie viewer yeah. we we look deeper into things like I mean if Adam and Brent saw this they would have seen so many more layers because they're you know very smart guys yeah on director showdown well and we are too I think we're yeah. I think but we're smarter we, we, we you know they're on some other level that you know you can't even yeah. you can't even comprehend but you know it's, we, it's barely even fun to listen to yeah. frankly yeah because it's like a bunch of gibberish to ple- yeah. plebeians yeah. but um it's like the average viewer would have just said, huh, he was wearing, he was in a haircut and he ran out. 
Yeah. But to us, we, we, we like mentally like put like the actual backstory, which is more work than it ever was. Yeah. Like, intended. Well, it's, it's more work than the movie has done. It, yeah. And it's just, it's like putting work onto the viewer to make a joke funnier. But if you do that work, it's great. Cause like you picture him in the yeah. fucking hair salon, just running out at the, as soon as he get the, like gets the fucking text. Naruto style, just like, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Running to the yeah. Steve Wynn Hotel, um, which put a pin in that. We're going to come back to it. Um, and, yeah, they have that fight scene, a scene that I think is fun. But then, uh, yeah, then they go up to – or uh, I almost said Kevin Hart. Uh, Kevin – almost said Kevin Smith. Kevin James runs up yeah. to the helipad, uh, which is where Neil McDonough and the bad boys have taken uh, his daughter. And mm-hmm. he takes a um, – what do you call it? A fucking uh, Batman style uh, uh, grappling hook. Grappling hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, roughly... you're, you know comic books. Why don't you know that, John? Yeah, I definitely should know grappling hook offhand. I'm a, I'm a big comic book guy. Big Batman fan. Yeah, big Batman fan. Um, and Is there a ska Batman? Would that like make ska you go... Batman? That'd be fun to see for sure. Yeah. Like a like a sax Batman, sax man. That'd be actually kind of cool. Well, sax man's a thing, but. Yeah. Um, sex man. But yeah, so Kevin James takes a fucking grappling hook, uh, like three football fields away to where Neil McDonough has taken his daughter and then they fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, his daughter rubs. Oh, hold on a second. So (sighs) Christ, please. He takes a grappling, he, he takes a grappling hook and it reminds me because every time Paul Blart is in some sort of danger, I think both you and I were like, just die, please. End yeah. this movie with you just dying in I, this I dangerous think that situation. Pretty early on, yeah. where we just we longed for his death, and then the even in aspects where he wasn't in a dangerous situation. Yeah, pretty much. Like I, I yeah. remember, like we were joking about him just having a heart attack because I mean, it's it, it would make sense. Like lot in the logic of the movie itself. Hmm. If he dropped dead at any minute, it would make sense. It would make sense. Because he's like falling apart the whole movie. He's like, oh, jeez, I didn't I didn't eat enough sugar. I didn't take my medicine. And it's like, th- this guy's going to die before he hits 40. <laughs> yeah. His daughter's like going to be at graduation at college and her dad's going to And he has a foot cut off due to diabetes. Yeah, exactly. He's going to be in a wheelchair because he can't fucking walk anymore. Yeah. Oh, but oh, but good lord! Oh, the the manager of the hotel, the beautiful woman, yeah. is in love with him. This fat loser. God, it's, they just want you so, to be on his so, side, and he's a piece of shit. He's an asshole. So before we, before we move on even more, yeah, Paul Blart's chasing down these thieves, mm-hmm. and he, he knows they got guns. He 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 can't he can't no matter how. Big Paul Blart is he can't deflect a bullet. Yep. You know what he does? He goes to the hotel shop mall area mm-hmm. and finds bulletproof luggage. You hear that right? Jesus. You heard dude. that oh, right. We already passed that scene in the movie, but, but we need to go back to it because we it's need one, to go of, back here. one of the most baffling it is the Set biggest pieces. character development arcs in. So you you have you have bulletproof luggage, and yeah. he says, you know, I'm gonna steal this because I have no yeah. moral compass. Yes, yes, yes. Ends justify the means in Paul Blart's Hammurabi. Uh, uh, what's the name of that guy? Hammurabi's code. <laughs> Of ethics, you know, yeah. and just no, no Machiavellian. Sorry, Machiavellian uh, ethics. Yeah, and just by the means, why not? And he takes the, he steals it. Before you get to the next part, okay. Paul Blart, a man who is, to be generous, three hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> we just need that. That and is he's so. about how tall, um, Gee, John. I, he he has like the build of somebody who's five seven. I'd well, say five seven. So honestly. he's more horizontal than vertical. Am I right? Almost, almost. He's a husky boy. Yeah, he's a big boy, and the movie knows it. That's for sure. <laughs> and 
this this luggage probably is a good a weekend bag a weekend it's a good like three feet by two feet yeah it's and a, maybe it's a, a weekend bag. thick it's it's like when you when you want to go to your 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 mom's house who lives in you know Cal, sunny california mm-hmm. and you're in texas and you just want to spend a weekend with your mom you take this you know small like not too big no and big it's got to be bulletproof because you don't know what kind of people are you know <laughs> that live by bulletproof <laughs> that, that live by it's brolin uh, proof it's josh brolin proof it's definitely not blart proof that's for sure oh boy oh boy it's not absolutely <laughs> and uh he, you know what he does dear listener you know what he does he gets inside of it Boy, oh boy, if that Paul Blart, that 350-pound man, doesn't just squish his little and, body into that fucking weekend suitcase. And let's even think about the lit, because we didn't even think about the logistics of it. How did he move himself to the right spot while being in the luggage? Well, okay, now now we're getting to something here <laughs> that I don't think we've addressed. Is the, the, Paul Blart... The Paul Blart of the room, in the room. Now... The, this is the, it, the he's Paul Blart he's Mall fat. Cop to get that metaphysical. Joke? God damn it! <laughs> I say it again because I missed it. The Paul Blart in the room, the elephant in the room, because he's fat. Oh, they, uh, that's funny. <laughs> now let's get into the kind of the metaphysics of the Blart series now, because mm-hmm. is is he some kind of uh, otherworldly being who no, I think can manipulate his yeah. shape? Because because this scene would have us believe that he's a fucking mm. cartoon character because oh, he fits in this luggage. The way the camera films it shows mm. that there's plenty of room around Paul Blart inside of this luggage. Mm. It's almost like a uh, you remember out of the box on Disney mm. Channel, out no. of the box. Out of the box. There's about three people yeah. listening that are losing their fucking minds when I'm saying that. It's 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 basically the same thing as. I don't know, like SpongeBob, like you brought up earlier. It's okay. like you go in the house that's real tiny and there's a ton of room inside. Right, right, right. It's like a Pee Wee's Playhouse type thing. Right. Um, and that's how it is in this luggage. So so I feel... Um, the rules of the universe don't apply to him is what I'm yeah, suggesting. I, I feel bad for the production or prop master or stage production designer. Yeah. I mean, we can't say that enough. I feel bad for... Everybody involved in this, except for the director. So this and is Kevin this James. is this is An- this is Andy Fingman talking to the production designer. Okay. <sighs> oh, hold on. Let me just do this line real quick. It's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of coke on his nose. Okay. So um, Kev- Kevin goes in the his luggage and um, uh, his nose is bleeding now. And uh, uh, he it's bullet it's fucking bulletproof okay like you gotta you gotta make sure this is bulletproof on luggage mm-hmm. and his, his eyes have rolled into the back and of his uh you gotta build it inside for kevin james going and we gotta film it all right um you need anything else you get? okay and that's my um uh, impression of that's theory. good no that i feel i feel like i was in the room yeah. I, I feel like i was there yeah. you really built a scene and so yeah let's product. let's talk about what you set up Oh wait, okay. We'll finish it off real quick before we move on. Uh, he he he's on top of a staircase and um, he's in luggage, room. and he slowly scoots towards mm. the stairs where mm. a henchman uh, that can be the only thing that we call Batista, him, I guess, is, like the oh, lesser the Batista, Batista guy, yeah, yeah, like the D level Batista mm-hmm. um, is like walking up the stairs with his gun, and he's like real henchmany, and he's like, mm. "We got to get this Paul Blart because this guy's onto our scheme," and like all mm-hmm. this shit. He he falls down the stairs. In the luggage. Well, it's, it's not a very. Cartoon. It's not very bulletproof because bullets go right through it. Remember? I don't think they go through. They it, do though. because there's holes in the in the luggage when he goes into the water in the luggage, and they leak through. And he was like scared when bullets. In. So, wow, so even even why that, why why didn't he die? <laughs> If the bullets went through because, the luggage, because because <laughs> my my friend my friend John that I've known for years, yes, Delphin, he's exactly what you thought he was. He's a metaphysical entity. Jesus, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Paul Blart, he, he is a tour de force, a tour de France. 
<laughs> he's a tour de France himself. There, there's, there, so there's a layer yeah. of reality here. We all live in the third dimension, right? Right. Um, back to the metaphysics of, of mm-hmm. the Paul Blart series here for a second. Paul Blart is in the fourth dimension, so he's a fourth dimensional being, right? And he, that is that is that even yeah. knows that he's being in he, that he even knows that he's in a movie, yeah. That he's being filmed for an American film, <laughs> right? And it's not even Kevin James is the crazy thing. Yeah. I think. I think it is the metaphysical. It's a uh, projection of the. He's like a projection of the fourth dimension. Yeah. So you only see like the three dimensional projection. It's like seeing a shadow, you know. So you don't see yeah. like the whole fourth dimensional like entity. Yeah. So he can change yeah. his, his shape and form to be whatever right, that it right. really. So needs he, to he be. just shifts in the fourth dimension to. Appro- to the appropriate uh, shape for that um, yeah. scene, and I feel, and I think, uh, sugar is a a substance that um, crosses between the third and fourth dimensions, and that's what keeps him yeah. binded by the uh, by our dimensions and his dimension. And once yeah. he loses the sugar, he starts going, being sucked back into the fourth dimension. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, that yeah, that's a good. I like that theory a lot. Mm-hmm. That uh, that it, that it's that it's almost like his, like he's a vampire that has like left the castle for the night, you mm-hmm. know, and that that the daylight's coming, but mm-hmm. you know, um, he has to keep getting his his. Uh, he has to get sugar. fatter. Yeah. yeah, he has to keep getting fatter and fatter, or else he gets pulled back to the mm-hmm. fourth dimension. Um, <laughs> Paul Blart to. Or Paul Blart Mall Cop too, right? Isn't that the the title of the film? Yeah, it is Paul Blartist Merchant Warrior Doe, mm-hmm. Merchant of the of the Fifth Realm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, even though we brought up some some interesting points, is bad. Oh, oh, I guess I should say he saves his daughter. Who gives a shit? She goes to college. I don't yeah. know if we even set that up. Oh, she, and how like? Oh man. We didn't talk about how, like, he doesn't deserve any of the stuff that happens. I think we did. I think we touched on the fact that he is a is a garbage human being and doesn't really deserve anything. I, I, I he, so he decides like there's no character development, there's no arc for him. But he, he he's like anything, he's yeah. like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. You're gonna go to you're gonna go to UCLA, and it's like what? Okay, like I, I, when did you didn't set that up at all? To me, it's like you don't deserve to say that, you fucking asshole. Like that's how I felt. Yeah, like, when he absolutely. Because because like halfway through the movie, like, he successfully yeah. um, gaslights his daughter right. into being like, "No, I need to stay with my dad. He needs me, and my dad needs me." It's Stockholm obvious. syndrome, like to the maximum level. And you're like, "Fuck off!" This guy. Yeah. This is like this guy's toxic beliefs personified yeah. in his daughter and then at the end of the movie there's no development to to make this justified yeah but he's like no you're going to ucla cut to fucking yeah. him dropping her off and i'm like okay well it'd at least be cool if he like hops on his security segue and like the final bit of the movie is like oh he's a security guy at, at UCLA. ucla yeah but they don't do what that. do we get instead adam walk us through it <laughs> that final scene. Instead, he goes back to his suburban, which I assume is a suburban. I don't remember. And he's about to go home, back to New Jersey. Because he, he's seeing his daughter off to UCLA, and she's a big girl now. Mm-hmm. And he's a proud father. Yep. And you know what? He has a moment hesitation to look back at his daughter just to see a glimpse of her before she goes and becomes an adult and pursue the the career of her dreams. That's not what happened. No. He sees a thick ass police officer on Riding a horse. horse. Yep. And he's like, I'm gonna fuck this bitch. Yep, he's like, time to nag another woman into falling in love with me, because I'm a toxic pile of shit. So he starts walking at her and he's like He's like, uh, he's got the trying to do the Ryan Gosling. Yeah, eyebrows. he's like, cl- like sh- closing yeah. his, like bringing his eyebrows down mm. and kind of uh, wincing a little trying bit. Trying to look cool, and it's it is like epitomizing my hatred for Kevin James. It's the most, my John yeah. Casares's hatred for mm. Kevin James into like a fucking singular moment. Mm-hmm. It's like. 
I'm this fat, unfunny fucking idiot, <laughs> and I'm walking towards this girl who oh, is out of my league, and I'm going to try to gain her affection, and the system is on my side because she's going to give me her number, mm-hmm. and he fucking is about to get written a ticket by her. For jaywalking, because he did. He broke the law. He did. and he's breaking. He's broken many laws. She's writing him a ticket yeah. for that reason. He says, well, I'm a fucking security guard like you. And she says, well, here's my number, which fuck you, Kevin James. Fuck you, everybody involved in this movie. He doesn't deserve that. But why? Why would you end it like that? Doesn't make any sense at all. Um it like even just from a screenwriting perspective, yeah. Even from a screenwriting perspective, you're setting up. She's way out of his league. It doesn't make any sense why he would like her. I get that it's like a joke, but like the GM of the hotel, like proposes her undying love to him mm-hmm. after he nags her the whole fucking yeah. movie. She literally would like get on a bed, take off all her clothes and lie there and just let him just do whatever yeah, and wait for him to fucking die from a heart attack on top of her and probably suffocate and her, suffocate her yeah. to death. But no, he negs her says, fuck off. Negs her gonna... to oblivion to have, yeah. you know, to settle, to settle, to for settle for this handsome, attractive, <laughs> handsome uh, guy who's kind of an asshole, but sure. Fuck it. He's yeah, better than Kevin James still. Yeah. Um, he shoots sandbags really well. So he does. Oh boy. Yeah. That scene. He's like, he like John wicks the fuck out of those sandbags. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And so she gives him her number. He slaps her horse on the ass. It kicks him. We get a fun little CG Kevin James CG moment. leg. Yeah. And it, it just hits he him. Flies real across hard. the street and flies into the side of his fucking SUV. Hopefully breaks his spine. Maybe the next one he's in a wheelchair. God willing. Um, <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh, are you okay? And he's like, no, but I feel better now. I feel nothing. God is a superstition. <laughs> That's what I wish it would have said. But no. how incredible would that have been? I would have redeemed this entire film yeah. if those were as, the last. As the, as the fourth dimensional <laughs> entity leaves Kevin James's body, and we're just left with like a like a Kevin James who can't walk. Boy, Marge, that end was a a little strange. That was huh? a little bit of a doozy. Uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense there at the end, but uh, <laughs> boy, he's fat and he likes those scooters, huh? <laughs> anyway, fuck this movie. Fuck everyone involved. It's terrible. Um, what? Just never watch it. It's yeah. There's like three good jokes, and I think we covered one of them. Another is the gross banana. Oh, I kind of like by Myrtle. It's really jarring yeah. and like kind of it's disturbing. Actually, it's, yeah, it's actually disturbing and kind of like audacious and how gross it is. Yeah. Um. But then again, it's like th- this movie has a low bar for comedy, so I'm kind of like mm. you know water in the desert mode. Um. And there, I feel like there was something at the beginning. Um, I can't remember what it was, but. Yeah, I don't know. As we get here to the end, uh, mm-hmm. the movie's credits have rolled. Um, yeah. You know? And it just seems like this movie was the most designed by the most cynical capitalist of Hollywood who yeah. said, you know, th- there's the flyover states that, you know, they need movies too. Mm-hmm. We got to, you know, those the the white 40 year old dads of the midwest who want to go to vegas because they love gambling in vegas yeah they so, need some entertainment and they love vegas and they like making fun of that guys yeah and they love seeing they love seeing a loser guy in a terrible like not a like a non-authoritarian position (laughs) trying to be in an authoritarian position and they like making fun of that person yet they themselves are identify with that character which is 
and it's like this weird cognitive dissonance mm-hmm. that, that that is uh, a very good term that I'm surprised yeah. we haven't dropped before you said it just now, frankly. It, it is well because this is like almost the epitome of like cognitive dissonance mm-hmm. in the history of cinema. Yeah. No, I I think it is too, man. Yeah. It's like let's laugh at ourselves and not in even the most be cynical way possible aware of it exactly that's that but feel like we're better than ourselves what kind of weird <laughs> sorcery is this film a hundred years from now <laughs> they're going to dig up the ashes of humanity because we're going to be long dead long dead you and i and they're going to all, all of us long mm-hmm. dead you and i delphin and john mm-hmm. um Brent and Adam of the Director Showdown podcast, long dead, all of us, mm. and they're going to find Paul Blart, and they're going to start watching it, and they're going to say, oh, this is why they're dead. <laughs> this is why humanity died, is because oh, yeah, yeah. Their, their entertainment mm. liked to... Uh, believe that it was something light and fun, yet was transporting this virus of an ideology within mm. it, and it infected their whole race. Mm-hmm. And With these uh, memes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think, and they, and they, they couldn't figure out that this was a piece of Russian propaganda that um Boy. corrupted the yeah. the the midwest yeah and made a hundred million dollars that's a whole nother fucking that's a whole nother podcast so what do you right think there, listeners do you think adam sandler is a russian agent let's tweet tweet us tweet at us <laughs> hashtag sandler russia S- a Sandler comrade question mark hashtag comrade Sandler, comrade Sandler. hashtag Kevin comrade <laughs> Kevin comrade. not to be mistaken for Kevin Conrad or yeah. Kevin Conroy from yeah. Batman and Joseph Conrad was quoted in this movie oh no can you he, I think it was that a was hard so dark, weird was it a hard darkness heart of darkness quote? yeah man it's a hard darkness quote mm-hmm. they quoted hard of, the, the, <laughs> yeah there's some darkness within this movie that i wish was explored there's like a but whole, it's like a meta it's like a meta like cynicism that's why yeah. i almost think like it was this was made by almost like an evil genius who was like fuck americans maybe that's andy fickman man yeah i don't know there, he's like you're gonna eat this shit up like all the all and the I'm, all that fat and yeah. All that, all that fat goo that you see at the end of this movie—that you're going to eat that all. Well, if, that, if it is, that is the it, that you know. Speaking of the movie, you know the fat shit that like um, makes them stick to walls. That wasn't a device in the movie, apparently. Yeah, that's a representation of the the blubber of and the uh, the indulgence of the American Midwesterners. Yeah, and he's just slapping it in your face and make you stick to it. And that's the whole idea behind that item in this movie. You know, it's like, here it is. It's in your face and you're sticking to this fucking fat shit that you, that you hate. Yeah. And love at the same time. God, I guess so, man. Yeah. Mm. That fucking like spy kids two yeah. CGI era CGI shit. Yeah. where you're like, Oh, okay. You guys had already spent all the budget. Mm. before this scene and you just need to like scrape something together to call make, up uh, finkman's brother who uh you know yeah. who's in uh um, fucking bobby fickman the uh, that, uh, cg guy <laughs> yeah bobby i'll get something together for you this week Who's at like jackson high school like in his like film <laughs> class and he's working on yeah. blender a lot of this movie you know? plays like some kind of like high school or even like oh technical college yeah i was like huh jimmy from uh sixth grade really made a great movie movie paul blart ball cop too yeah it's, it's really surprising impressive. that he was able to get the cast together that he did <laughs> it's like it's like if a six reader did make this you'd be like super like impressed like oh way to go like jimmy but then you know that it was a grown man yep who was from texas who <sighs> yeah made this so not not giving us a good name um but 
I think that's probably going to wrap us up on Paul Blart, yeah. Mall Cop 2 for mm. Revenge of the Sequel, Revenge the podcast. Is, yeah. You got any final thoughts before, before we, before we cap it I, I feel like I feel like I've expressed them for the most part. This mm. movie is reprehensible. I think this movie is actively damaging the psychology of America. It, it 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 hurts me to know that this movie made over a hundred million dollars, and I feel like only I, I I I hope this comes across the way I mean it, but I feel like the people who needed to see this the least, I feel like saw it and loved it. I feel like the this movie uh, its target demo probably ate it up and it like supported their ideology um just like the filmmakers intended probably mm-hmm. um uh Kevin James doubles down on being the um the worst actor in American film history I think um I think he's at least the moral, the most like morally compromised actor in uh, current modern cinema. Like I, I think we were talking. Was it before the podcast or when we were podcasting that like Adam Sandler makes just dumb comedies and nobody really likes? Mm. I think Kevin James makes like actively manipulative <laughs> comedies that at, like truly. Like here comes the boom and shit like that. Like he makes yeah. movies that actively manipulate their audience to be on the hero side, especially when they're Paul Blart's and their side is bullshit. And their side is like an outdated, uh, like masculine stereotype or like power, uh, dynamic. Um, this movie sucks. It's fucking terrible. Uh, I did go watch fucking observe and report. If you want a good mall cop movie, that reason. movie fucking rules. It like yeah. knows what it is. That movie's basically taxi driver and a, a great mall. character study. Yeah. It's yeah, absolutely. Study. Yeah. It's a really great character study. It's like what I wish Paul Blart, Paul Blart, like mall cop Two, It kind of flirts with these darker moments, but it does nothing with them. And instead has like these like heartstring tugging, like weird manipulative moments. Poisonous, yeah. Exactly. And just go watch fucking Observe and Report. It's a really underrated, like great mm-hmm. movie yeah. that I feel like more people should watch. It's on Netflix right now. Mm-hmm. Go watch that. Thank you, John. That was very succinct. You're welcome, Dolphin. And uh not overly pedantic. Mm-hmm. Uh my final thoughts is that I completely agree with everything you said. Mm-hmm. Um I think uh, Paul Blart is not just keeping malls secure, but keeping the white Midwesterners secure in their own toxic ideologies. Yeah, dude. And he, what he does is Bring that he's home, on geez. a Segway that crosses the golden grains of the Midwest and... And he goes through miles and miles of that grain, treading a beautiful line through the fields of grain and sees all these old elderly people and waves at them and says, hey, you're right. (laughs) You're right. And he just keeps merrily going down. Yeah. That f- those 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 the cornfields pa- passing by racists and misogynists alike, yeah. and just pointing at them and saying, "You're right. right. You're everything right. you believe everything is correct. Is correct." And they just look at him and say, "What a fucking fat loser!" But he's right. Damn. Yeah, dude, you <laughs> fucking nailed it. That's like that is it completely. Look at that fat idiot. Makes a lot of good points. <laughs> oh my god. He's Donald Trump. Paul Blart, ladies and gentlemen. Truly. It is not even a joke. No, honestly, I feel like that is a profound realization I just he's, had. He's Donald Trump. Yeah. He puts a mirror up to yourself and says... I hate you, but I'm also into you at the same time. Wow. 
Holy yeah. shit, man. It's because Woo! Paul Blart confirms everything you say that you're right about yeah. things. You know? Wow. All right, guys. Well, that is that is the best way to fucking leave this episode. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, yeah. I have been Brent from director. Whoa! Whoa! Crazy twist. reveal. Who could have expected that? What? This has been Brent from director showdown. It's crazy. Who are you? I'm Adam from director showdown. Hot diggity dog. Wow. Gang. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We what did. a twist of events. Bit of a little crossover for a y'all. Bit of a crossover. Covered a sequel. A sequel. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they did the same. Maybe go checked out. Director Showdown, yeah. if you haven't. Yeah, go check out uh, the, our part, our podcast at yeah. uh, Director Showdown. And well, their podcast. What? On our... The, no, check out podcast. their episode on our podcast. Yeah, if you, if you haven't. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, th- they'll, they'll be doing some directors, and uh, yeah. you, you could hear the fellas on there. And we had a terrific time here taking over the Revenge of the... The sequel. It's yeah, been a pleasure. We, yeah, all, all irony aside, we love those guys. We yeah. love their podcast, and it's been yeah. super fun to do this. And uh, yeah, honestly, like uh, all like uh, their episodes are so much fun to listen to. Mm. They're going to have a lot of fun episodes coming up. Mm. Uh, you know, now that now that End Game is over, now that Countdown to Infinity um, is kind of, I assume maybe going on hiatus. I guess you know, listen to all the other episodes to find right, out. About right, right. And uh, Delphin also does a lot of other podcasts on Delphin Pod. Yeah, so be sure to check those out. Um, uh, yeah, Revenge of the Sequel has yeah, it's been on hiatus, but I hope that um, you know, starts rolling them out again. Yeah, I'm sure. always. I think I every think time I see Delphin, I'm like, "Where's Revenge of the Sequel?" Once yeah, you may on? you may hear a familiar voice or two mm-hmm. on uh, maybe some future episodes that have. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we we've been on uh, we've been guest on there. Yeah, Podcast for sure. And whatnot, so. um, but uh, yeah, and then listen to the episode they did for us. I think it's going to mm-hmm. be a lot of fun. Listen to our previous uh, season. Mm. It's going to be done at this point. Nolan V. Fincher. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun to record. A lot of fun people. Mm. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be it, guys. Thank you yeah. so much for listening. Thanks for putting up with uh, such a long episode about such yeah. a bad <laughs> fucking garbage movie. But uh, it's at least fun to talk about bad exactly, movies yeah. like this one was. And go check out our friends at SickerFridge.com. Uh, yeah. Always good stuff going on over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. See you.